So I call, I consider myself to be like a visual DJ. <laughs> That's the best way to put it. So just like a person is like when you go to a club or to a party and they may have one mix going on and you listen to the song, everyone knows the song and then they come in and like remix it to a whole nother uh, cornucopia of different kind of sound and like just, just fuse this kind of thing. That's how I'm wide where I see things and I'm a sponge. I take everything in, uh, whether it be, um, I call it just a, if you focus on the five senses. So if you focus on the five senses where I'm hearing things, if I'm smelling things, if I'm tasting something, if, if I'm looking at something, if I'm touching something, it makes you think of a, either a time or error. Uh, it makes me think about um, music. It makes me think about political views. It makes me think about pop culture. And I go on this wild roller coaster of merging those, this, those styles together. And I'm what you call a visual DJ. So there is nothing being a multidisciplinary artist that I cannot do. Hey, what's up, everybody? Sean Dill here. You're listening to a brand new edition of your weekly None of Your Business podcast. Hey, where's Lacey? Well, uh, she's not with us today. Sometimes we've got to give her a little bit of a break. We just wheel her out and she does podcast after podcast and does social media content like it's going out of style. And so we let her catch a little break today, but that's totally fine because I'm going to be able to handle this interview just fine. About uh, two years ago, uh, I was able to meet this incredibly talented young man. He was on the stage at summer camp as a guest of one of our speakers, Don Roseman. And nobody knew what um, he was doing. He came out on the stage and he had um, an easel set up and a canvas and he started to go to work and he was starting to paint as Dawn was delivering her, her talk. But nobody really could see or understand what the painting was. Then at the very end, he flipped the canvas upside down and everybody realized that he had painted this piece that hangs behind me in our Naples studio. He painted that painting completely upside down. And that was based off of a theme of Don's talk about pushing all of your chips in on you. And that little guy there, right there in the middle, that's me. So if you're listening on uh, on podcast, uh, listening on a podcasting platform, you can't see it, jump over on YouTube, check the episode out so you can see this young man's amazing work. And so we are blessed to have with us today from Fresh Laundry, Theopolis Smith. Let's bring Theopolis in. Hello, sir. Great to see you. Likewise, man. Likewise. <laughs> we begin the podcast with the same question every single week. Your answer to this question, I already know, because um, when this painting was gifted to me, I was like, well, I need for Theo to sign it. And so Dawn arranged for us to get together, and then um, you flip the canvas back upside down, signed the, the canvas, flipped it back up, uh, right side up, and you told me a little bit about your story. And so, you know, I think for art, it's a little bit different because not everybody can relate to this, whether it's dance or it's, um, you know, as you do with paintings and sculpting that you're getting into or music or even in food, those are all things that not everybody can do. So it makes it a little less relatable. So it's not like, well, of course, like Theo's just really good at this, but your passion and your drive to do this was driven through a specific set of events in your life that has uh, really even framed all the way to the naming of this business that you are working under. Um, why don't we begin by you sharing with us your creation story? How did you end up here um, as this renowned artist? Wow. Well, thank you. Uh, thanks for having me again. Uh, so pretty much it's just out of a need and necessity to pretty much create. Um, believe it or not, all walks of life, no matter if you're um, a, a creative genius as myself as far as painting-wise um, or uh, doing any, anything else, um, anyone can kind of have the same passion, the same kind of feel, the same kind of understanding. For myself, myself started um, at the age of three professionally. 
uh, 13 to furthermore to do like cars and motorcycles. I would airbrush t-shirts and things of the nature and do things for my community. Um, and it got really popular. Like it became pretty, uh, pretty, you know, confidential and um, going forward, you know, with it. Fast forwarding, I would say in my 20s, uh, that's where it was like my aha moment. I'm finding my rhythm. I'm finding out who I am as a person. And um, I didn't get that until I was literally sobbing in a load of dirty clothes. Kind of funny place to be at to get a revelation. Uh, but for myself, to be able to like, everyone's finding their purpose. Everyone's finding their passion. Everyone's succeeding. Who am I? What's my story? Uh, so I find myself, like like I said, look, sobbing in a load of dirty clothes. And I just had this rhythm, uh, this whisper, if you will, of like, um, you know, the scripture that's in the Bible where it's talking to David saying, create me a clean heart and remove the right spirit or a steadfast spirit within you. And only felt that time was either talking to people, uh, painting or uh, praying and uh, just kind of meditating and just figure out who I'm as a person, what can I do and how, how can I be beneficial and effective and um, not just exist. Um, so I found myself li literally like reminding myself that painting has got me thus far. What else can we get into? So I kind of gathered myself up together. And then from there, everything that I've created so far, I call it my laundry. Um, so it's my fresh laundry. So everything from that point on has been new thus far. So now as a 40 year old young man, um, I'm able to share with the world what I'm able to do as far as creativity. So not classically trained. This is something that I just kind of out of a, a, a need, need to to create in passion. So, well, and, uh, and it's interesting right before you slipped in, not classically trained. Um, I, I want to talk about that because at what point, I mean, to be honest, there's a lot of people. I mean, I, I, you, you know that I have a background in music. Really love music. That's how. That's how. Um, you know, I came together with Dawn, and we were in a band together. Um, and a lot of people think that they have a talent for music, but they don't. That's why we have shows like American Idol and yeah. and and whatnot. But art is a little bit different because there's not. I mean, if you're singing or playing out of tune you're singing or playing out of tune now art it's kind of different because somebody it, it's you know it's it, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder uh, yeah. at what point do you realize because you know when we're kids we all draw you know when we're in school we, we're yeah. taught to color at what point are you like i'm pretty good at this well i was wired different like even in school so funny story i was a kid uh back in my day as old people say i would with to i would create art and names like people's names and bubble, bubble letters and things for like dollars so like from then i had the entrepreneurship uh spirit of like okay this is something that people are drawn to me in this nature that created the rhythm and habit from then so it's like once you find yourself in these witty predicaments everything that's from your past even from childhood up to now creates to your story creates your bigger picture and so from then it's like what can't you do once you get to be my age how do you monetize that? So you're a 40 year old yeah. man and yeah. you have talent, but you still got to eat. <laughs> you got to pay now, the bill. Was... Um, and so again, let's you know, props to you and kudos to you for one, having the talent. But I got to tell you, there's tons of people that have talent sure. that don't manage to monetize this talent. They just live in obscurity. You go to, you go to church on Sunday sometime and you hear people singing and you're like, wow, they could yeah. be, you know, a recording artist, but they're not because they haven't really figured out how to leverage that. So from an early day, you're making the bubble letters for your friends, but that still doesn't pay the bills. How do you start getting into the arena where you're like, wow, I can, I can leverage my talent to actually make real money. That's uh, for me, that was the, the shift in my life because it went from being a talent to people's like, how much will, um, you know, how much can I pay you for your services? And I'm like, that's the, that's the light bulb in your head. That's the, that's the golden the aha moment. So it's like, okay, this is a real thing now. Um, like you said, I do have to eat from this. How can I monetize this? So I would literally uh, make one painting and I would sell my originals. Like it was like hotcakes. I'm a person where, um, and that, that, it, that, that first initial like fire start moment, I would be the kid that would be up four or five o'clock in the morning. That's knocked out four or five paintings at one time simultaneously because I paint that fast. So you get that creativity to persons like saying, hey, I'll, I'll pay for this. My first investment was from a friend from college who came down from Guatemala and said, hey, I want to buy your painting. She wrote out the check and I was like, this is a real thing. As I'm carrying to the painting to the car, I'm sobbing. I'm like, okay, this is one of my one of my babies, but it's something that, that's poured for me. 
But now it's like, this is a real thing. This is a real business. And what else can I get into from this? So I find myself com 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 compiling ways to talk to other artists or talk to other people that had nothing to even do with my field of how do you monetize things that's in your business, whether you be a person that, that is a chef uh, to a person that is um, a, 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 um, um, a mechanic or anything of that nature that, that could actually like monetize their gift or their, their um, rhyme or reason of understanding to do something very well, skillfully. Um, so for me, learning how to like figure out, okay, take my paintings. So I know marketing became my background as far as my major. I would take my paintings, I would hold them to my originals. I would take pictures of my originals and then sell my prints. From there, word got around where I would go into small and starting at, cafe, at cafes and I would actually put my paintings up in cafes and put my name attached to it. Hopefully someone would just either just stop and look at it and appreciate it or buy more of it. And so from there, I found my rhythm in far as figuring out how to scale my business. How can I get into uh, homes of others? How can I be able to, uh, to market it to the masses? What is my audience? What's my target audience? And how can I get something that everyone doesn't have? Because I don't want everyone to have it. It's kind of weird. I want to be spoken for, but I want people to see the value in it as well, too. No, I agree. I don't. I don't think that's weird at all. Um, we have mm, four pieces of fresh laundry hanging in our home in Naples, Florida. Looking forward to getting some more. I like that one behind you there. I like that one. Thank you. Thank I want to do some. I want to do some stuff like that. There's a, the ones that you've done have been of people, mm -hmm. me, Lacey, a couple of my mentors. But we can't have all pictures of me all over the house. People are like, "What are all these?" all these paintings of you all over the house. <laughs> so I want to get some of I got I love I love that one behind you. I want to get some pieces like that. Let's Thank talk you. about that. Um so you have something inside of you, an idea, an inspiration. How how what's that transition? And that's I think the big question everybody wants to know because that's the gift, mm -hmm. right? What is that transition from that inspiration to bring that out of you and then you see something like what's behind me or what's behind you? That's the final product. The hard part, people talk about that writer's block, you know, where we get stuck. Um, and I think, again, a lot of people feel like I have inspiration or ideas inside of me, but I can't get them out. How mm -hmm. You said you're able to do multiple paintings at the same time, that you're a yeah. prolific painter. That's how fast you are. Well, how are you then downloading and then re-expressing this out so quickly? You must have found a, a, an ease or a trick to doing that. So I, call, I consider myself to be like a visual DJ. <laughs> That's the best way to put it. So just like a person is like when you go to a club or to a party and they may have one mix going on and you listen to the song, everyone knows the song and then they come in and like remix it to a whole nother uh, cornucopia of different kind of sound and like just, just fuse this kind of thing. That's how I'm wide where I see things and I'm a sponge. I take everything in, uh, whether it be, um, I call it just a, if you focus on the five senses, so if you focus on the five senses where I'm hearing things, if I'm smelling things, if I'm tasting something, if, if I'm looking at something, if I'm touching something, it makes me think about a, either a time or error. Uh, it makes me think about um, music. It makes me think about political views. It makes me think about pop culture. And I go on this wild roller coaster of merging those, this, those styles together. And I'm what you call a visual DJ. So there is nothing being a multidisciplinary artist that I cannot do. Hmm. I'm, I'm that confident now where I'm able to go across the board. It's a smorgasbord of, of all kinds of things that's in my head. And I'm able to just match things up one thing after the next and be able to share with others. And that's how we get the chance to relate and open up to people and, and um, have this kind of like uh, laundry following, if you will. On a daily basis, how many pieces of art are you are you working on? I start with a warm up in the morning. Um, and that could be anything from me uh, actually sketching something, painting something. I may be in a virtual reality, an Oculus painting or something like that. You never know what my tool may be, but I'll start with that in the morning. And then I may knock out two to three, um, unless I'm doing something like a really lengthy commission piece. Uh, but I would do about two or three, maybe four per day. Let's uh, talk about this St. James, yeah. because this isn't a one and done, not like, hey, I just... I did this and then I moved on or even a lengthy commission piece. This is an ongoing. Uh, so one, I want to know the story of St. James. And then I want to know why did this stick? Why does St. James get to be this evergreen and ongoing project? 
So St. James is a character of mine. Um, believe it or not, it's based off of um, a mixture of a lot of things. It's a mixture of my personality. Um, also, to like I said, being a fan of music, uh, St. James was sparked by listening to my, my brother, actually. He played in the band, and um, I heard this song, and it was my first time hearing the song. Um, it was by Louis Armstrong. Um, it was talking about St. James Infernery. And then I was like, this, this is a dope thing. And it kind of put in homage of my brother, myself, my story, and how I relate to others. And so when I painted, I have an original St. James where I painted it and everyone loved it. People, um, that was one of my first big uh, pushes where people started to, um, um, you know, buy and, and invest in. And that was, you know, me monetizing. And people would get a hold of him and would love him. And so I wanted to take him further where Louis Armstrong's story was, he was a kid who um, grew up, his mother, excuse me, his grandmother uh, did laundry for um to, to make ends meet was well, a kid on new year's he shot a gun in the air he went to jail in the juvenile hall um just kind of paraphrasing everything he uh, met with some other kids they were playing instruments and they were doing great things and they told him that he would never amount to anything he, he couldn't do this um in parallel with my story other people when i've told myself that i cannot do this i cannot be an artist i couldn't be a full-time artist um, you you can paint yourself out of paper bag if you will. Fast forwarding, Willie Armstrong. Once he got out, he would play skillfully with the with the trumpet. People person, very vibrant, very loud. That was his sound. That was his his voice. Was his trumpet. For myself, my music, uh, excuse me, my art, is a way of saying there is nothing that I cannot do. I have to get out my own way to be great, and that's old habits, old routines, and old being consistent or incon inconsistent to now be able to thrive in everything that I do. And so I wanted the character to come on a journey with everybody because someone has something that they're trying to strive for or they're trying to put into perspective or see the bigger picture of who they are and what they are now. My obligation is with this character to make sure that he makes a lot of noise. I want to make as much positive noise as I possibly can. And I think he's like my flag character to be able to do that among other things that I'm a part of, but he is, always has a place in my heart where I'm able to take people on witty rides and pair the two together. Do you know who Miles Davis is? Of course. Isn't, isn't there a little of Miles Davis in St. James? Yes, it is. <laughs> That's what to, I always thought when I see it, my interpretation. To, it, I mean, I don't it, make it. That, it is funny you mention that too because he has this cool like swag about him. So he's, he's able to fit in any time and era or genre, um, any walk of life you will find a little St. James in you, I promise you. And mm. so with me, with the journey of him, you will see him, whether it be in snazzy outfits, uh, you may even see him in, in certain places. You may see him in Carnegie Hall later on. You may have seen him sitting by the, the Mississippi River in St. Louis. It's a number of things that you're going to be a part of. You may see him with a Kobe jersey on. You may see him with a Nipsey Hussle jersey or something like that with prolific with tattoo on the side of it. Anything could happen with St. James. So I just uh want you to come on a journey with me with him. Well, how, how do people engage with St. James? If people want to know more about St. James, yeah. how can they find out? So two two ways, freshlaundry.com. Fresh Laundry is spelled with P-H, uh, P-H so freshlaundry.com. Um, or find me on Instagram under that laundry, and that way you can actually um, reach out to me. I, I'm a person that's um, engaging, and I want to talk to people. So people that have my laundry hanging, uh, we have some kind of way that we're always connected. And I don't want you just to be connected by just having a piece of my artwork. I want to swap life with you. I'm trying to figure out the best way to entertain each other. Hey, we're on the same rock together floating in the world. Why not see what we can get into together? What kind of positive outlooks can we have together? You know what happens, Theo, is that whenever people of influence like yourself invite the world to access them, whether they give their cell phone or they give their email address or they just say, you know, connect with me on social media, message me. Mm -hmm. Majority of the people don't do anything. Why do you think that is? I mean, I even think even for myself, I mean, you know me, I'm just a normal dude. Mm -hmm. um, you know, why, why do you think that people have a resistance to connecting with somebody, especially someone so talented like yourself? I think people, um, if they find the value in, in what they have, because I'm, I'm not everybody's jam, unfortunately, and it's okay. Um, but if we have something in common or the same note or the same kind of pathway or same kind of outlook on life, I'm willing to swap life with you and figure out where we can go to. So guess what? It's okay if everyone does come on a journey. But for those that do, 
they find value, they find worth, or find a witty way to get into a different kind of zone and check out something they've never, ever encountered before, I'm up for those journeys. And guess what? Those value relationships grow stronger. And we figure out how can we partner with other people? Because the cool thing about Fresh Laundry is people that actually own Fresh Laundry have witty ways of partnering people together. So not only is it something of a, of a, of a, a camaraderie of just having art or the luxury of it, but it's also a networking tool where you have these this long la- laundry line of people that you can connect to no matter what field you're trying to get into now or something that you may be in, want to embark in on it. I'm the plug, but also the, the, the flag. Well, I want to, uh, I'm going to come back to St. James, but you, sure. you led me here to this um, because I, everybody want, they don't want to just see St. James. I want to get St. James in your life. I think St. James needs to be in your office. St. James needs to be in your house. First of all, you're saying like, so people that hang fresh laundry, uh, that they're interconnected. Now, somehow back to the beginning of this, you've managed to get fresh laundry into some pretty dang impressive doors. Tell me about what that journey has been like, because it's not like you've sold just these uh, paintings to me and Lacey at our house. You've put this and you've got you've got yourself into some very impressive doors. How how have you managed to do that? And what has that challenge been like? The challenge is being consistent, and always keep in mind that it's another day at the office. Um, I, I, I'm not the person that uh, gets starstruck. I'm not the person that's like, okay. I mean, I'm I'm glad for these these milestones and these accomplishments, but it's more still to your story. It's like how far can you make noise? And so for myself, um, you have your people like Spike Lee, you have your Gene Simmons, you have um, I've partnered with Starbucks. I've worked recently with Puma. Um, and it's just, you find yourself making noise. As long as you do something great, it will go to the places that I need to go to. And so I find myself, it's almost like Forrest Gump. You know, if you've seen a movie Forrest Gump, he went on these like random roller coasters of, of things that like only he can do, but he's like, it was like monumental historical moments in life that he connected with people. Sometimes you need to find yourself doing what you can do best and just put it out in the atmosphere. You never know where it may land at. And so that's all I do. It's not, it's really organic. And as long as you make enough noise, it'll get to the place it needs to go to. Well, are you at liberty to tell some of the places where you've gotten to? Yeah, so currently I'm hanging um, in the Oscar Museum that's in L.A. Um, uh, locally, the Philharmonic here. Um, we also, like I said, locally with them, um, I just did a partnership with Puma, where I have a friend of mine who actually was part of uh, the U.S. Um, soccer team. Uh, the, the the winning team there for some U.S. soccer. And he was just like, hey, came back home and said, hey, you're the first person I thought about to partner with. Um, so we, we did a great collab with that. Um, you may see me partnering with um, Universal Studio. Um, I was part of the, the presentation for the movie Us. Um, so if, South to Southwest, if you ever go to that, if you're a movie buff, uh, sometimes you just find me a partnership with people like that. And I'm more so, I'm kind of like behind the scenes type of person. Um, so you, like I said, you never know who may watch you. You just need to find yourself doing something good. And if you do it skillful enough, that's what happens. And so that's, I'm thankful and blessed to be able to just wake up and do what I, I love to do. And, um, I put it out for the world to see. You've also been approached by celebrities and athletes and other artists for commission pieces as well. What, when, when some, what does that feel like when somebody maybe even that you look up to or you idolize comes to you and is like, hey, I heard about you. I love your work. I'd love to get a piece made. What, what, what goes through your mind when that happens? After, after like I said, like I said, I, I try to count it as another day at the office. Of course, it can be like a person. Like if, like, if like Mike Tyson was like saying, hey, I need a painting from you right now. I'll go bananas. I'm like, okay, <laughs> on it, knuckles crack. It's going to be a lot of pressure. So I'm going to give you behind the scenes me. It's under pressure because like I want to make sure I put my best foot forward and I won't complete it until it's my best foot forward. And then from there, after initial the, the wear and tear of emotions, because we go on a journey as artists. People don't know this side of artists, but we go through this thing of like, OK, we see the end in mind. We see the ending goal of how it's going to look, how it's going to feel, uh, the colors, the vibration of it. And that's our goal. But along the journey, it goes to a phase of like, OK, I'm confident I'm going to rock this. It's going to be the best, dopest shit ever. To, to the point to it's a plateau of like, this is ugly. Why did I do this? How am I going to finish it? Will I ever get there? To the point where you get over that curve. So like, oh, I am the shit. I'm going to do it. I can do it. And then when you deliver it, best will in the world. It's like, what's next? What else can I conquer? And that's each, every last project. 
in your dreams of dreams, um, what's left in the story beyond the 40 years? I know you also have inside of the sort of art genre some expanse expansion beyond just canvas and paintbrushes and and sketches. Where 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 is this story fresh laundry going? I wanted to go through several many avenues. So I'm I'm a, I'm I'm learning how to dream and I'm giving myself permission to dream. I think we don't do that enough. We give ourselves just limited amount of views and we don't give ourselves permission. I give myself permission to where I want to of course have like my own uh you know clothing line of laundry. I will have my art a certain kind of line where people, you know, you may bump into somebody in the, in the airport, you may see a lapel or something like that, or a certain piece of art. And it's like, okay, you're, you're, you got fresh laundry. That's one extreme. To the other extreme, um, I want to see my, my stuff um, paired with witty ideas. I don't want my art to be in traditional places. Um, I want to be in, in your restaurants. I want to be um, just witty. Play. Like I want a place where it's like off the beaten path where no one would find two things paired together. Like for example, would you ever see art or art show in a laundromat? I want to present ideas like that. I want to pair things that are like out of the normal place that you would not put art at and fuse the two together. Just as if I fuse two pieces of art together, I want to fuse experiences together. That is my main thing. And then wherever I may be in life, I just want to be able to people to be able to network, conversate, and we just continue to go on with life. In some circles, we talk about the BDC effect. Um, what happens is in Black Diamond Club, if you can get that push from Sean and Lacey, hey, everybody, you should use this product or use this app or use this service. Sometimes it can overwhelm the provider. Um, but at the risk of doing that, one of the things that I have found is incredibly, incredibly valuable from Theo. And we've done this numerous times is to commission Theo to um, create pieces as a gift. And I mean, if you really want to wow somebody, and it's not like, you know, just some random guy down the street, you know, commission this, like Theo was saying, his laundry is hanging right now in a lot of places of prestige. And so for you to commission this artist to make um, a gift for somebody. And he, it's not like he's just going to send something from the studio. He actually creates something through his inspiration. And I got to tell you that those, those, those gifts that we have sent out have been incredibly, incredibly impactful. Um, and because of that, Theo's art hangs in uh, a lot of uh, very influential people that we know, and we've shared that experience with. One of the things that I find interesting is that it's like a meal. Right. So like if I go and I go to a restaurant and I have this amazing meal, let's say that I I ordered the pork belly and I was like, man, that was just unbelievable. You know what I, I want? I want my friends. I want my family. I want you guys to go back to the restaurant and experience the pork belly. Right. So I tell my friend, you got to go to that restaurant. You've got to get the pork belly. Well, once you jump on the website, www.freshlaundry.com. Once you see his work at that laundry on Instagram, then you start to begin to experience this. And then you're like, wow, I want other people to experience this. And you start sharing it. But I got to tell you, if you're listening to this, uh, reach out to Theo. Um, this, if you want to make an impact, if you want to change somebody's life, if you want to bring a tear to their eye and move them with a gift, um, this is one of the best gifts that we've ever used uh, to develop, cultivate, and maintain relationships. I want to get back to St. James, though. We go to go to the website. We go to Instagram. We start to plug in with St. James. What's the idea? Are you do you want people to identify? Do you want people just to follow? Can they purchase their own St. James piece? Are you selling any of the originals? Is it just the prints? Give us a lowdown on this whole project. So I, will be, I will be selling originals, um, but it will only be a total of 40 made in my lifetime. 40 originals made in my lifetime. Um, and then besides that, I will have limited, limited runs of prints um, at those announcements. Um, if they follow the culture of me, um, I will only release a certain amount of number. And then the thing is, in my world, each one that's released as far as um, the next prints, it unlocks either another print or another witty story or another rabbit hole of things that I'm into. 
And I just want people to be a part of something that is um, just not your typical artist. Um, I'm not your Rembrandt. I'm not your, your Picasso. I'm, I'm Theo. <laughs> and um, I'm a living artist, <laughs> living and alive and thriving, and I'm doing well. And um, I just want people to come on a journey. I honestly wholeheartedly want to make sure that people um, are connecting the dots um, with their journeys, their businesses, uh, relationships. I think relation, relationships is um, the best currency around. And so with that, I want to make sure that I do my diligence to make sure that people are getting a hold of that and finding it in my own witty way of doing it, presenting it. So come along on a journey. That's all I'm asking. I mean, I love that. You just plug in with Theo. You're invested in the journey. You can invest at the level that you want. You could stand on the sidelines and be an observer and cheer them on and send them words of encouragement. Or you might decide to invest with some of your hard earned money and put this in and see this young man as an investment. I strongly encourage you uh, to take a look at that because I, I believe that um, it truly is an investment. I believe that Theo is going places. You don't run into many artists that have it put together like you, Theo. Um, you. That, that's absolutely incredible. Um, I want to thank you for for sharing with us all of the diverse thoughts um, that are going on in your mind and the thank elements you. of your life that you are expressing through your art. It's a, it's a true joy to have you here on the podcast. Thank you. It's an honor, man. Thank you so much. Well, everybody, you've got to plug in to Theopolis Smith. He's at Fresh Laundry, P-H-R-E-S-H Laundry.com. And on Instagram, at That Laundry, I have no doubt you're going to be seeing his stuff in a lot of places. And just like he said, I also love this. You're going to see it and you're going to be like, I think that's Fresh Laundry. You're going to know because it has a certain style, it has a certain look. Most importantly, it has a certain feel. Theo used the word vibration. It feels a certain way. Um, you've got to plug in with this young man. You're going to be um, you're going to be inspired. Uh, you're going to be inspired to be a better better person because of him. Theo, thank you so much for being on the program. You've inspired many people. We look forward to watching you grow and develop, and we'll continue to share your work on our platforms um, in any way that we can. Everybody, I hope that you are inspired. You too can do great things. You might not believe it, but like the journey of that painting, you go through a period where you've got a great idea and then it turns and you're like, I'm not sure what in the world I'm doing. And then at the end, boom, look at that right behind Theo. Look at that right behind me. You've created a masterpiece. You can create your own masterpiece as well. We'll be back again next week with another edition of the None of Your Business podcast. Thank you so much for being with us today.